everybody was stunned about the work in the film. All the light bulbs are going off in everybody's mind that, oh my God, we've never seen this before. It's sort of like splitting the atom. You know, once it happens, the industry shifts and everybody starts talking. There were a couple of things that, that I wanted to ask you about, sort of quick and dirty stuff that wasn't talked about in the video at all, which is some of the background, like the, the motion. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, and I'm, uh, I'm going to actually be able to cut in some of the things from this little, that little documentary. Sure. The, the motion is so absolutely beautiful, but so where did, that's not computer stuff. Where did you learn the, the motion concepts and how to make that motion so fluid? And Well, I was a, I was a trained classical animator. I okay. went to a Disney school called Alias, or called um, um, Sheridan we're, College outside of Toronto. Okay. Right, so I mean, we were trained, anyways, in hand-drawn motion and fluidity and in-betweening everything. And yeah. of course, us us two D guys, you know, the pain that it get that it takes in order to get beautiful acting that's going on with a face, lip sync, and all that stuff. Yeah. As soon as computers came along, a lot of us, you know, in the early days, like I, I started in the, in the computer side in the late seventies, early eighties. And guys like me and Lasseter and some other guys that you know that were animators, specifically classically trained animators, went nuts when we got our hands on 3D, because we couldn't believe that you were getting free in betweens between key keyframe one and ten, as right. an example. Mm -hmm. You know, even though yes, it was a computer in between, you know, and of course Tippett would have massive arguments with people about animating on ones as opposed to animating, you know, <laughs> between. It was very, it was a very interesting argument because. Yeah. You know, the animating on ones produced such a horrendous set data set, you know, that it was no noisy. It had to be completely culled down, you know. So um, so the, flu the fluidity was really something that's inherent in the, in, the, in the system itself, right, in the case of soft image. And, you know, secondary animation and weight really came from layering, you know, and that was the, one of the features of computer animation is that you could do principal walk cycles and you could layer the muscle reactions as a separate pass, okay? And not worrying, you didn't have to do it at the time of camera, unlike stop motion, all right? So in each one of the cases of the T-Rex, you know, as the example of the leg, we would have, you know, three-dimensional spherical bladders sitting hung, you know, hierarchically hung off the bone mm -hmm. itself for the armature and digital armature. And we had separate animation curves at every step, it would just go, like that, every step, like that. So the curve went like this, like that. Its own isolated curve, but in conjunction with the step, okay? And so what would happen was that once the skin was wrapped around as a, um, as a um, sort of a pre-rendering process, because it take a low resolution data and sub in the high resolution data, it would, the control vertices, which were very finite, were instructed to listen to whatever the bladder did at a certain percentage. In other words, the ones in the middle listen 100%, 90%, 80 70 you know, kind of, and tapering it off. So it gave this sort of follow-through thing. Beautiful. That was a process that we developed at ILM called enveloping, which is literally hand addressing the amount of uh, weight that was at each, at each control vertice as it spoke to the actual digital bladder moving up and down. So that was something that allow us in, you know, in answer your question, sort of to uh, give the illusion of fluidity in addition to just the principal walk cycles. But I mean, it took me a long time. I mean, I was taxed because I built the Rex and uh -huh. I had to figure out, you know, first shot that I did was busting through the log. That was 75 frames as JC4. That took me th three months to figure, four months to figure out that run. Wow. You know, and I wasn't getting it. I was following the day. I was thinking, you know, I was like up all the time, you know. And then finally one day, DePay and I said, let's just, you know, because we're dealing with something so big, you know, why don't we just take all, list all 20, 150 animation curves and put a little equation on it that expands them out by 10%, percent point one zero, And it, we did about 0 0.10, 0 0.15, and it slowed everything, and bingo, it worked. Wow. At massive weight in that shot, and that's what did it. So we subsequently used... You know, JC5, which is the next shot, you know, where he hits his head in the Jeep, and JC6, and all the running shots would use that data, you know, the run data. And, of course, they had separate nuance, like the head stuff going on. But, you know, that, that was, uh, that, yeah, that was, that was, that was, took a while, man. And, it was, and believe me, you're sweating bullets, you know, because you're like a commodity at that time. Janet Healy was a producer, mm -hmm. and they were new to this whole thing. Den Dennis and Janet were completely new to CG. Mm -hmm. And, um from from Terminator. I mean, you know, Mark and I set up Terminator 2, and it was a completely new thing to these guys. 
you know. And actually, the funny part that I don't tell people is that, that, that when I did have the, the original bone test playing on a monitor for Kathleen Kennedy and Frank Marshall and Ed Jones and Dennis Muir and Jen, they all come, came walking in. I had a big Barco monitor position, you know, and I'm like this, and I could hear them come in the large graphics. And they, she sees it. She goes, what is that? And I said, oh, I'm just, you know, messing around. And, and just Mirren's like this, like blown, you know, like shocked, you know. And uh, and then she goes, well, what? I said, well, I'm just messing around with a bone test, you know, and CG, you know. She pats me in the back and she goes, you have a very bright future. That's what she said. <laughs>